Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly gleaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Happy birthday, Army, and congratulations those to you who are re-enlisting today. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty and wonderful God, our rock and our salvation, we gather today to celebrate the solid foundation for peace and liberty that our Army has provided our nation for 249 years. And we remember with thanksgiving the faithful and heroic women and men who have served before us. Grant courage and fortitude to those currently serving in harm's way. Strengthen families awaiting their return and give comfort to our fellow Americans whose loved ones have given the last full measure of devotion. We ask you now to empower each of us here, Lord, to live out the noble values exemplified in the lives of our soldiers past and present. Pour out a special blessing upon these fine soldiers here today who will reaffirm their commitment to serve and renew that commitment within each one of us so that our army will continue to be ready for all that is required of us. By your strength, O Lord, we will keep the lamp of liberty burning in our nation and around the world. In your most holy name I pray, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General George. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? All right, we had a great run, so um, good to see everybody in here. Um, I first just want to thank uh, everybody for, especially from our joint team, for, for joining us. Um, Secretary Raven, um, Vice of the Navy, shipmates um, that are here, um, and especially thank Secretary Hicks. Um, I know from being up there what the schedule um, looks like, so I appreciate you coming down here and helping us uh, celebrate our birthday. Uh, I think we look pretty damn good for 249 years old. So, um, Secretary, Secretary and I get the pleasure of getting out and seeing what our troops are doing um, around the world, and it's, it's really impressive. Just got back from Europe all up and down the eastern flank and was super impressed with what our troops are doing to build their war fighting prowess. Um, just the level of discipline that they're, you know, that they show um, to our partners and allies and what they're doing innovating. We got troopers, I said this this morning, we got troopers right now laying in the jungle um, in the Philippines and a lot of other places um, out in the Indo-Pacific. We've got troopers right now that are out at CTCs that are training and working hard. And uh, we have folks in the Middle East and cops and fobs. We got our 7th Transportation Brigade that's out there um, helping with humanitarian assistance. So just a lot of tough missions. Um, I didn't get into SFABs in Africa, SFABs in South America. So the Army's really busy. And we're very proud of, of everything that they've been doing. Um, we also were blessed to just be in Normandy and uh, for the 80th, and it was really amazing um, to meet all the World War II veterans. I think there was about 170 of them there. Um, I'll recommend a book um, that for everybody to read, uh, D-Day by Stephen Ambrose. It's a really good, you know, it's stories. It's an excellent book. Um, but three takeaways for me after, you know, that D-Day that I think is important for all of us 
here and then talking to our World War II vets. The first is um, that winning wars requires a strong army. Always has, and I think it always will. And so we got to remember that. The second is that the burden of combat, and really the tough part of it, is going to be borne by our soldiers, our NCOs, and our junior officers. And you'll, you'll see that, or you'll read that when you, when you uh, look at that book. And the third is that our duty back here at uh, higher headquarters is to do everything that we possibly can to make sure that our troopers have everything that they need, the resources, that we fight through all the bureaucracy, all the challenges um, that are necessary to make sure that we are putting them in the best possible position um, to be successful on the battlefield. And I think we all need to remember that. And I think that's pretty consistent with the last 249 years. And I just say that because, uh, and I'm sure there, a lot of you will know this from what we're you know, reading in the press and everything else, the world is probably as volatile as I've seen it, um, certainly in my career. Um, and I wanna make sure that we're even better for our 250th birthday um, coming up um, next June. And then last, I just wanna talk to our, you know, our most important uh, asset in our army, and we spent a lot of time talking about equipment, um, or all of these, and I would, all these re-enlistees. So I would ask you guys all just to stand up real quick, turn around, so everybody can give you a big round of applause. Thank, you, thank you all. So we got to, we got to re we got to enlist 40. Um, the other night, and things are looking pretty good on that front um, as well. But again, we thank you for your commitment. We're all proud to serve with you and glad you uh, all agreed to sign up for 15 more years. So thank you very much. Okay, I'm gonna, I'd like to now turn it over to, uh, to my um, battle buddy um, who's down here, and I will tell you from working with her very close, no one loves the Army um, more than our Secretary. So, Secretary Wormuth. Good morning, uh, and happy birthday, Army. This is great. You know, we, a lot of us were out running, and now we get to do this, and we get to reward ourselves for running by eating cake, which is going to be great. So it is such a pleasure to share this day with you. Um, and I want to say, first of all, for those of you in uniform, thank you for continuing the Army's tradition of professional, professionalism and uh, warfighting excellence. And I also want to thank the 300,000 Department of the Army civilians who support our warfighters in uniform every day and keep the entire Army institution running. Sometimes our civilians are the unsung heroes, but you all are an incredible part of the Army team. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who supports our soldiers. Um, thank you for all you do, and I especially want to thank our Army families uh, who serve right alongside their loved ones in uniform. Couldn't do it without you. Even as we are um, celebrating 249 years, which is pretty incredible, the Army is also transforming for the future. We are, I like to say, we are transforming our weapon systems, we are bringing on board the latest technologies to keep our soldiers at the cutting edge. We're providing them with the overmatch uh, that we need to be able to defeat any adversary. We are transforming our force structure. We are restructuring our divisions into more lethal, agile formations, and we're building new units to increase our capacities for air defense, counter UAS, cyberspace, just to name a few of the important capabilities we need for multi-domain operations. And uh, we are, as the chief said, transforming how we recruit our soldiers. We are literally restructuring from top to bottom our recruiting enterprise so that we're able to tap into the very best talent that America can offer to the Army. And I think the chief and I and the SMA are feeling pretty darn good about how we're doing uh, with recruiting this year. Uh, looking forward to making our goal and also putting a great big deposit into our delayed entry pool. So uh, I want to thank everyone in the Army associated with our recruiting enterprise. But as we transform, we've also got to continue to take care of our people because 
the heart and soul of the army is its people. Um, and, and our soldiers, you know, again, the chief and I and the SMA, we were all in France to celebrate the 80th anniversary of D-Day. What I saw uh, there was the fact that, you know, our soldiers who are serving today are, con are continuing to serve with honor, with courage and determination, just like the veterans in our greatest uh, generation. Um, I met with a lot of the veterans who'd served uh, in Operation Overlord, uh, and you know whether they came ashore uh, on the beaches, whether they parachuted into the hedgerows, or you know even crash landed in some cases in gliders. Uh, it was really incredible to hear their stories of bravery, valor, and courage. And it was incredible to see you know how proud they were to wear their uniforms, to wear their medals. But I also had the opportunity to see hundreds of currently serving soldiers and leaders from across our army come out to participate in the anniversary of D-Day. Some of the soldiers uh, were coming to honor their unit's history. Uh, obviously, there was great representation from the 82nd and the 101st. Um, but there were also others like soldiers in the 173rd Airborne Brigade and the 10th Army Air and Missile Defense Command, and they were joining us from their current missions where they are standing shoulder to shoulder with our NATO allies all across Europe. And in those soldiers serving today, I saw the same sense of duty, the same pride, the same courage, the same selfless service that I saw in the um, veterans representing the greatest generation who had fought in years past. And, I, and it gave me the opportunity to reflect on the fact that when I travel, whether it's here in the United States to our installations or around the world, I see those same qualities in all of the men and women serving in our army, whether they are uh, training Ukrainian troops in Germany, whether they are defending our bases and interests alongside with our sister services in CENTCOM, or whether they're building um, partnerships and relationships with our allies in the Indo-Pacific to deter PRC aggression. And I've also seen it countless times uh, closer to home with, for example, our soldiers who have helped with the recovery efforts from the wildfires in Hawaii, or who have done typhoon relief efforts in Guam, or you know, helping to open up the Port of Baltimore, which we did just this week. I mean, it is incredible how quickly that incredibly complicated uh, recovery operation was completed. And I think the Army and the entire joint interagency team who did that should be very, very proud of the work that they did. And I see it here today in the rows of all of you who are going to be re-enlisting. Um, and for all of you who are re-enlisting, I just want to commend you for making the decision to continue serving our great nation. You carry forward the spirit of the generations of American soldiers that have gone before you. And we are looking forward to and counting on you all to lead our army into the future. I'm so proud of all of our soldiers and everything they're doing around the world today, and I'm confident that the Army will continue to be the greatest land fighting force that the world has ever seen. So it is an honor to wish the entire U.S. Army a very happy 249th birthday. Okay, it is now my pleasure to introduce our uh, next and final speaker, the Honorable Kathleen Hicks, our Deputy Secretary of Defense. And although the deputy grew up in a Navy family, couldn't not say that, <laughs> she fully understands the importance of the Army to the Joint Force. Uh, whether she is advancing Army weapon systems, uh, making sure that we develop drone technology, or whether she is advocating for our soldiers, civilians, and families, and service members across the entire joint force, you, uh, Deputy, have been at the forefront of strengthening our national defense in so many different ways for the last 30 years. So it is an honor and a pleasure to have you here today. Please join me in welcoming Deputy Secretary Kathleen Hicks.
Well, first of all, thank you to General George for figuring out that I did, in fact, intentionally wear army green today. Good mo Yes, you can clap at that. It's really such a pleasure to join you here to celebrate the Army's 249th birthday. Look, crossing this milestone was not inevitable. Since the very founding of this nation during times of conflict and peace, we've had forces that have threatened our national security, undermined our unity, and tested our collective commitment to our constitutional principles. The United States Army has been there all along the way protecting a fledgling nation from tyranny and fighting to ensure our republic could grow and thrive. And the Army's proud legacy continues today. Indeed, the Army's resilience as a fighting force and as an institution is a model for militaries all around the world. History, of course, has shown us that freedom has a cost and our soldiers have bravely borne it time and again. Last week, alongside our allies, of course, we commemorated the 80th anniversary of D-Day, a stark reminder of how the U.S. military has been a beacon of hope and liberty around the world. The prior week, we observed Memorial Day, paying homage and solemnity to those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms each of us enjoy today. And last Friday, I had the opportunity to deliver the commencement address to the 2024 residential graduating class of the Army War College. Many of those graduates commissioned about 20 years ago, knowing that they would likely deploy to or in support of war zones, active war zones in Iraq and Afghanistan. For each generation of soldiers that have served, and to those of you who carry the torch and serve today, we owe you a debt of gratitude. There is no army without its soldiers. You are the reason we are even able to celebrate this birthday. I can think of no better way to commemorate this anniversary than a re-enlistment re ceremony. So I would like to join uh, the leadership of the Army in acknowledging these 31 soldiers in front of us who will be re-enlisting today. The Army may be big, the largest military service after all, but each and every one of you is a critical contributor to that whole. Your service personally matters to our national security, and it matters for our democracy. In a few moments, each of you will raise your right hand once again and pledge an oath to support and defend the Constitution. It is my hope that you feel to your core the weight of that oath, the significance of the principles and values you're committing to uphold. Each day that you serve the Army, you are dedicating yourselves to a cause and mission bigger than any one of us. Some of you joined the Army for that very reason. Others of you might have longed for the adventure and camaraderie it has to offer, or you might have joined because you have a family history or a personal connection with the military, which inspired you. I recently heard one such story, that of Army Major Jack Gibson, which I'd like to share. In the summer of 1944, Major Gibson's grandfather, Private Jim Shalala, was an Army Ranger who fought with units through France and into Germany as the Allies advanced in Europe shortly after D-Day. Decades later, Major Gibson joined the Army as a Medical Service Corps officer and then as a judge advocate. But deeply motivated by his grandfather's service as an Army Ranger, he was determined to become one, and he did. This year, as part of the D-Day commemoration, Major Gibson was one of thousands of service members who made the pilgrimage to Germany, where he reenacted the Allies' airborne landing. Just as those World War II paratroopers inspired Major Gibson, know that through your show of commitment and your donning of this uniform, you have the power to inspire service in others just the same, whether it be through familial or community ties, and whether to become nurses, teachers, police officers, or soldiers like yourselves. Geopolitics have certainly evolved over the past two and a half centuries, as have our institutions, and those evolutions have yielded many advances for our soldiers. For instance, I'm sure today's uniforms are far more comfortable than those we are displaying here, uh, donned during the Revolutionary War. 
But even as time has marched on, land power remains as important today as it has ever been. That's because land power is staying power, building relationships, strengthening deterrence, and promoting stability. Those are all keys to promoting peace and security around the world. And if deterrence were to fail and our military were called upon to fight and win, the Army would be integral to the joint force that secures victory. As we approach the Army's 250th anniversary, let's all take courage in the enduring strength and relevance of the U.S. Army. It is and will continue to be the world's greatest land-fighting force. So, happy birthday, Army. Thank you for all you do and will continue to do in defense of our nation. Thank you, Deputy Secretary of Defense Hicks. I am John Wardell, and I was a member of the Second Ranger Battalion in World War II. Hi, my name is Special Swagenfer. Hello, I'm Brigadier General Matt Strout. And I'm Command Sergeant Major Kirk Patrolling. I'm Staff Sergeant Inez Hammond. I am Bernie Bluestein, and I was a member of the 603rd Engineers Camouflage Battalion. Happy 249th birthday, Army. Happy 249th birthday to our nation's Army. And a very happy birthday to the United States Army. I would like to wish the Army a happy 249th birthday. And I wanted to wish a happy birthday to the entire U.S. Army. Happy 249th birthday, Army. I'd like to wish the Army the 249th birthday. Happy 249th birthday to the United States Army. And I want to wish the Army a happy 249th birthday. Hooah! Ladies and gentlemen, General George will now re-enlist soldiers from all components of the Army. You ready? Joining General George today are soldiers from the National Capital Region. For those in attendance, please remain seated during the oath of enlistment. Ladies and gentlemen, General George. Okay, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that, I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, against all enemies foreign and domestic, foreign and, domestic and, I'll bear true faith, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and, allegiance to the same and that I will obey, and I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me. Appointed over According to regulation, according to regulation, and the uniform code of military justice, and the uniform code of military justice. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Congratulations, reenlistees.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, soldiers from the Army Executive Dining Facility are moving the Army birthday cake into position. The cake was prepared by the non-commissioned officers and soldiers assigned to the Army Executive Dining Facility. Deputy Secretary of Defense Hicks, Secretary Warmoth, General George, and Sergeant Major Weimer, please take your positions for the cake cutting. To commemorate 249 years of service to the nation, joining them is the youngest soldier, Sergeant Eric Carrasco from the Pentagon Tour Office, and the oldest soldier, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Scott Slider, from the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, G357. Ladies and gentlemen, please join Sergeant Green in singing happy birthday to the United States Army. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, U.S. Army. Happy birthday to you. At this time, a soldier from the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, will present the saber to the Sergeant Major of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, the official party will cut the Army birthday cake to commemorate 249 years of service to the nation. Participants, are you ready? I'll let you do Three, two, one, cut the cake. There it is. That was almost too many hands. That was too many. <laughs> I'll pull in probably in a slightly different direction. Let's get in here. Come on, jump in. <laughs> yeah, you right. you don't touch the light kick lid. <laughs> All right, Chief said this thing's zero calories. <laughs> Chief said that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, cake cutting participants. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join in the singing of the Army song. The words can be found in your program. March along, sing a song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way, 
Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. This concludes today's ceremony.